more about it is uh, catering to uh, you know a, a, a sector a, 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 a category of F&B which is very massive in India which is of course uh, Chinese cuisine but in a in a very modern in a very very systematized uh, fashion which is scalable but they have they have really boiled down the art of doing a great Chinese food in quick service format so so then so which which then of course makes India as a very big uh, market for them because uh, as Indians uh, you know we have made Chinese food our own uh, and uh, if done right uh, India definitely is nothing less than uh, anywhere from 500 to 800 store opportunity but of course uh, you know it all it's it all boils down down to uh, four things one of course uh, uh, who is our customer uh, what kind of uh, uh, you know uh, menu and pricing we want to do what kind of formats we want to do so we so we are looking for people who are uh, who want to build uh, an organization an entity an enterprise uh, into bringing in a brand which has legacy which has credibility which has a proven case of development across uh, uh, their their home market and uh, want to bring in their system to our country. Uh, we So we are open to that discussion. So this is a live session. Uh, uh, please speak to us live in, in a live manner. So you can uh, put in your questions, put in your uh, feedback in the Q&A box, and we'll try and answer those questions as we uh, go around in the session. On that note, one, uh, I want to welcome uh, Grant. Uh, Grant is the CEO of uh, uh, Noodle Box, and we have Sean. Sean is the development director uh, for Noodle Box, and uh, we have my colleague uh, Swaraj, who is uh, our vice president of Fran Global Leisure and Fran, Fran Global Brand Servicing, and my colleague Beash, who is here. So, uh, welcome everyone, and uh, let's yeah. start uh, by bringing in uh, Grant. Uh, uh, Grant, uh, uh, before we share the presentation, uh, you know, we've had some very interesting discussions in last, let's say, couple of months. What, uh, and I know you are working really hard in building this brand all over. Uh, what's your sort of, uh, you know, if you have to give a aerial perspective, when you look at a market like India, how do you see it and uh, uh, the value you want to build in the brand by connecting the brand with the Indian market? Welcome again. Yeah, thank you, Venus. That we're we're very excited about the possibility of entering the the Indian market uh, for a number of reasons. Um, you know, just the strength of the Indian economy is is fantastic. Um, the, the the how how the uh, you've embraced um, Asian food. You know, it's trending up all around the globe, uh, including in India. And just a little a fun fact that, that um, the people on the call won't know, but um, the Indian community here in Australia is very strong um, and uh, around about between 30 and 40 of our percent of our franchise partners here are actually Indian. So they were um, born in India and they've come over to Australia for multiple reasons and they've chosen a, a noodle box as as a franchise and um you know they're very successful over here and um so you know that's a few of the reasons why uh we're excited about opening up in into the indian market that's that's great grant if i before i bring in sean if i may ask a question see mm -hmm. australia of course is a very mature market when it comes to fnb uh, uh you know what 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 has been your observation and experience you building a brand in quick service business when there are so many other quick service brands burgers pizzas chicken so how how was how what really sort of you know what your your learnings and which you would want people who are looking at this category uh you know uh, when you bring the brand to india yes um thanks venus well a couple of things spring to mind uh the burger category is, is very crowded. You know, the, oh, yes. the, there's burger places everywhere. Uh, the chicken category is extremely crowded. 
the pizza category is extremely crowded you know in every market that you look at for yes. some reason the asian category and you know if we include our indian friends and our chinese friends <laughs> this is most of the world right it's right. Under, it's underserved um, by franchise any there's there's one other global brand that i know of who will remain nameless but um, no one's really taken on the the global market so yeah. we think it's time that we uh did this and essentially you know we've been doing this now for uh, i think 28 29 years so we we've been around a long time and um you know we have essentially taken what are the best dishes the most popular dishes from six Asian countries being Thailand, Korea, Japan, China, Malaysia, and Singapore. So we haven't, you know, they've all got beautiful cuisines, but we've we've picked the most popular ones and um, rolled it up into noodle box. And uh, we think the time is right for an Asian um, QSR to um, really make some inroads um, globally. So we, we've, we've launched in the US and that's going well. Um, India, you know, we're, we're very excited about, but there's other markets we're looking at as well. So we don't see ourselves as just a, a, an Australian um, franchise, even though we're the most successful Asian franchise in Australia by far, yes. but it's a tiny market compared to the Indian market. Right. Uh, but we have aspirations for a global footprint. And, um, yeah, we're looking for partners that are keen to join us. Absolutely. No, I think you you put all those uh, things in such a great fashion. I also believe, and, you know, of course, you and I know the brand, what you're talking about. Uh, but, uh, see, the palette of, of this part of the world is very different in comparison with, let's say, a typical Western world. And uh, the noodle box I know, uh, I've been to Australia many times, is it's actually, it's very, it's not alien to our palate. It, it, it is, uh, uh, you know, so so, th so that of course is, uh, is going to be working for the brand. And also uh, another thing which I have observed is, I think bringing in organized systems into a, a market which is rather, uh, uh, you know, fragmented is also system and hygiene. And I think uh, you have brought that in. System hygiene and, of course, uh, bringing, making it quick. Like, you know, you are not waiting for 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Uh, so, so I think I know you have done that in the brand and that is so much required. Uh, um, so in India also that would work, bringing in these best popular dishes, making it simple, not making it intimidating, making it quick and hygienic. I think we keep it simple, then India makes it becomes a very interesting market. Yes, I've, uh, I've got no doubt that we will need to do some tweaking for the Indian market. We're not that... Um, arrogant that we think what works in Australia will work in India necessarily. Um, but we've had to tweak our menu in the USA, um, at, at, you know, for obvious reasons. They have yeah. a, sweet, a sweeter palate than yes. than Australians. Um, but, you know, we do, you, you're quite right with, you know, the magic in QSR is to do a quality meal quickly. Yes. It's easy to do a meal that's not quality fast so all of our dishes are cooked fresh you know when the customer orders we can do that in under three minutes and so from the time of order to in the customer's hand is three minutes um when we're going well and yeah all the ingredients are fresh so it, it, this is an incredibly healthy um meal for 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 people um nothing's pre-prepared nothing sits there for an hour waiting for you to um choose it a lot of vegetables um, in, in our meals, fresh vegetables, um, which and the, the Asian diet is typically seen as being quite healthy um, yes. uh, for you. No, I think that those are, those are all valid points. Sean, I bring you in now. Uh, I understand that you do have a presentation. So we'd love yes. to hear from you. And again, I, I uh, you know, uh, share with my audience that this is a live session. You can put in your uh, feedback and questions in the Q&A box. Sean. Thank you, Venice. Okay, I will just share my screen.
Okay. Hopefully you can see that now. Yeah, right. but uh, I think there is a, I see a slide and then I see a smaller slide also. I don't know if oh, that okay. is supposed to be, I think. Uh, okay, let me try that again. Don't forget the sound, Sean. Yep. And if you want to put up sound, uh, Sean, so when you share your screen, on the left bottom, you will uh, uh, get a button which says uh, enable sound. Just just, just click on that and you, it'll be okay. Okay. Yep. Is that better is that the same? Yes. No, that's perfect, Sean. Off you go. Okay. All right. So my name's Sean O'Connor. Uh, I am the Network Development Manager for Noodlebox. Um, uh, very excited to be here today. Uh, Noodlebox is owned by Concept8. Concept8 is a, a multi-brand franchise partner, franchise law. Uh, we have over 150 franchises running throughout Australia, um, predominantly Noodlebox, uh, but we also uh, have a, a, a couple of different burger burger brands um, and a chicken brand as well. So um, at the end of the day, uh, we have 11 brands right across our network um, and I'll get to I'll get to some of those brands a little bit later on in the presentation. Um, so what I'm going to do is play you this presentation. This, I, sorry, God, I'm going to have to stop this because this is... Um, I'll, I'll, I'll start again because that um, I did click on. If you if you can't play the video, it doesn't matter. We can load it later. Yeah, okay. yeah, you can even share that link in the chat box. We will share it with everyone and all our registered participants. Okay, I just sorry. There was two presentations that were open because of that, um, that issue. So now I should be okay. Okay. Have you got the two boxes or the one box? Two. Oh. two. There um, it's not giving me the not giving me the option to um you don't need to play the video it's not overly that's important okay, Sean. yes i think we can we can Go do back it to where you were yeah yeah Okay, can you see that? The only yes. problem is when I go to full screen, this is the only presentation I have now. Okay, okay. that's fine. Yeah, all right. Uh, so, uh, oh yeah, we've gone through that. So, um, uh, one of one of the uh, most important things about Noodlebox is that we are a family-owned business. Uh, we're not owned by private equity. Um, and because of that, we we have developed a purpose for our business, which is to enable the dreams and aspirations of our franchise partners. So uh, we're not driven we're not driven by the almighty dollar. Uh, we're driven by the fact that if if we can make our franchise partners successful and profitable and happy, they will grow. And they will tell their, their their friends and their acquaintances about our business, and our business will continue to grow. And that is predominantly how the business has grown to the stage it is today. Um, a little bit about the company history. So, um, as Brad said before, we we began in 1996. Um, our, our two young founders uh, went on a trip over to Southeast Asia and um, got caught up in the vibrant orchid food markets and thought this was a fantastic idea to bring back to Australia. So, 
That was 28 years ago. Our two founders are still owners of our business today and sit on our board of directors. Um, and we, over the last 28 years, have, have grown that one single business that landed on iconic Chapel Street in Melbourne uh, to over 100 franchises right across Australia. Um, a little bit about, um, we, we are the fastest growing QSR in Australia. Um, we, we've we ventured into the USA uh, in 2023, and we look to be opening our fourth store by June this year, which is really exciting. So I think a, a part of that is that um, over 28 years, you get to go through all the, uh, the, the ups and downs of running your business and get to iron out all the kinks and uh, we now think we've got a great business that we can expand internationally. Um, so now we're looking for, uh, for for partners that are not only partners that want to um, uh, bring a business to, to their own community, but we're looking for partners that want to grow a business and bring Noodle Box um, right, right across the world. Uh, but the cornerstone of our business is having a really successful support team um, and, and not only one support team, but eight support teams. So training, legal, accounting, network development, project management, marketing, product innovation, supply chain and operations. We can't run a successful business without having those teams all running um, really, really well and integrating really well with each other. Um, so a little bit about the menu. Um, so the menu is, is made up of um, wok chard noodles, fried rice, uh, stir fries, we have vegetarian dishes, um, we have the sides and we have our limited time um, only offers, which is an essential part of QSR. Um, we've got a, a marketing team talking to the supply chain and menu development teams and creating great new dishes to attract uh, new customers in on a, on a weekly and monthly basis. Um, and a little bit further, if we delve and, and you can go and visit our website at noodlebox.com.au um, a little bit later to see the um, the depth of our, men our menu. But if we go into and you have a look at the uh, the, the noodle menu, as Grant mentioned earlier, we, we've picked the best, best dishes from Southeast Asia across six different countries, uh, being China, Thailand, Indonesia, Japan, Mongolia and Malaysia. Um, and we've We've got them on our menu and they're very, very popular dishes. But again, the same with our rices and the same with our stir fries as well. So I'm just going to share a short video with you now. <laughs> Again, with 28 years of experience, we have um, we have uh, a lot of assets in terms of marketing, a lot of assets in terms of uh, visual um, uh, flyers, or, um, marketing plans, things that have worked, things that haven't worked. So we're bringing the best of, of those plans all the way across to uh, to India. So a little bit about the Australian market: uh, we we serve 2.2 million orders annually, over 70,000 customers a week. We're serving a million uh, kilograms of noodles each year. Um, we have really high growth rates. And a few of our key drivers, uh, I mentioned before, our great franchise partners. And, and as Grant mentioned, um, we have yeah, 30 to 40% of our network made up of the Indian community, which is absolutely fantastic. And, and they really seem to be the drivers of wanting to own more and more stores, which is really exciting. Um, we have innovation and technology, which I'll, I'll show you on, on the next slide, some of the stuff that we're doing there. Um, and then, and I'll come to a little bit later, um, some delivery partnership work that we've got as well. Uh, these are a couple of our sample formats. Um, so the, the format on the left is our standalone uh, restaurant. Um, this requires about 70 to 90 square metres. Um, it's essentially a shop front um, where, where you've got a, a counter, um, and, and, a, and a dining room, uh, and we have a digital menu board, um, and the kitchen usually runs down the side of, uh, the, side of the, the restaurant, 
and then we have all our fresh ingredients in the um, on the on the counter under the cover. And on the left there is our it's our newest format. It's our Noodle Box Go. Uh, we've partnered with a um, uh, a leading petrol company in Australia or in the world really. Uh, and they uh, we we've, we've just opened up this week now, and it's it's. Uh, like a mall type scenario where we're looking to work out at 30 to 40 square metres. Um, and uh, we're in a shared dining hall with three or four other uh, vendors as well. So, so again, we can, we can cater for both formats and that both four formats have their, their pros and cons. Um, I spoke previously about delivery. So um, one of the most important things when we, when we've gone through this, um, uptake in delivery over the last sort of five to six years is to ensure that our our franchise partners have easy access to, to delivery. So what we've been able to do is partner on a national uh, scale with our delivery aggregators. And in Australia, they are Uber Eats and DoorDash. Um, and I know that they are different in India, uh, but we do set, set up national accounts. We set up national structure. Um, we integrate our uh, POS systems uh, in each restaurant so that they talk to those um, delivery networks. So uh, receiving a delivery order just becomes part and parcel of um, every day for our franchise partners, which is um, which is easy. Uh, and it, it sometimes it's just as easy as getting an order over the counter. Uh, training and development. So we have a development team and for all our uh, international partners, we're looking to send a, 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 a training team over to uh, train up our uh, our franchise partners over there. Um, it's Our training is is obviously hands-on, but we, we also have a, an online portal which has um, access to all our standard operating procedures, all our training modules. Um, it's tailored in a way where a staff member will have access to certain levels of training and then a manager will have higher levels of training and then a franchise owner will have all levels of training. So um, it's set up, uh, it's very easy to use. Um, it's, it's done on an international platform which is accessed right around the world um, by uh, one of our uh, strongest partners uh, and um, more importantly, once you once you complete your online training, our training team will come over with um, the, the help of our, help of our operations team to get you started from day one. Um, so there'll be pre-training before uh, the store opening, and then uh, we will hold your hand as the store opens for the first couple of weeks of trade as well. Uh, but Noodle Box, we're more than just noodles. Um, so we. We've cleverly um, integrated um, two additional brands into the Noodle Box kitchen. Um, we did this. We did this because we we saw it as a um, a minimal um, min minimal expense to expand the the revenues of our franchise partners. We had we had staff already there. We had equipment already there. We had paying rent. Um, what was another way we could bring in additional revenue? So. Uh, we've created two brands that partner with the Noodle Box business, uh, being Double Dragon Dumplings and Supreme Leader Korean uh, Crispy Chicken, which I'll expand on a little bit uh, in a moment. Um, but it was a way to attract new customers and improve market share. Um, we had these uh, great relationships with our delivery aggregators, and we thought, um, what a great way to uh, launch uh, two extra um two extra brands out of our existing kitchen, utilising all the marketing and utilising all the know-how that we had already built up over the years of dealing with these delivery aggregators. So um, now a kitchen, a noodle box kitchen is set up that they can actually run a full noodle box kitchen. They can also run a full double dragon dumplings kitchen and a full supreme leader Korean crispy chicken kitchen as well. Um, and it's all done um, under the standard operating pr procedure of a, a noodle box uh, franchise. So I'll just play you a short video. This is our double dragon dumplings. <laughs> Yeah. 
that a little bit of uh, menu sampling there. So dumplings are one of the um, one of the fastest growing uh, segments in in um, in world food at the moment. Um, we're we're putting some research together at the moment, which we will release. Uh, but um, it's it's underperformed. Uh, there's no QSRs that currently do it, um, and we think it's been a great addition to our our menu. And it's um, combined with the supreme leader uh, it makes up around about 20 percent of our revenue for our middle box franchisees uh, this is our supreme leader chicken and i'll play you a video <laughs> So again, so again, a sample of the menu there. These are all part of uh, Noodle Box, or this is uh, so this will be, or this is a separate uh, brand, Sean. No, this is all part of Noodle Box. Oh, so, okay. um, so I, I, as you walk into a Noodle Box um, over the counter, you'll have a menu. It's a it's a six page fold out menu, um, and uh, four of the pages will be Noodle Box. But then you'll have a page dedicated to Jump Double Dragon Dumplings and a page dedicated to Supreme Leader. Um, but then if you are sitting at home or sitting in your, your hotel room as a visitor and you're going onto one of the delivery aggregators, um, you would you would see, if you were searching for chicken, you would see the Supreme Leader brand come up. Um, mm -hmm. And if you were searching for dumplings, you would see the Double Dragon Dumplings come up. So, again, it just, it just broadens that... Um, broadens that reach um, uh, because if someone's looking for chicken, they wouldn't be coming to Noodle Box, but now they possibly could be because we have this uh, have this chicken brand. So it's been really beneficial. Um, and look, Brand was the instigator of this, so uh, I would love Brand if you've got a, a minute to talk about talk about this. Um, perhaps finish the presentation, Sean. Will. Yeah, sure. Not a problem at all. Um, so again, what are we looking for? Um, we're looking for uh, people with ambition, um, people that are, are happy to follow a franchise system. Um, and we think our franchise system, um, we all, or, <laughs> you always think your franchise system is the best, but it truly is a, a franchise system that's built on on ease. Uh, once once you learn it and once you are in it, it is, it is a very easy to run operation. Um, we, we talk about um, uh, pre-organising uh, food and then cooking to water. Um, there's not a lot of difficulty around running a restaurant once you've got it. You've got to have that great love for food, um, great communication skills, um, and a real passion for, for customer service and motivating team. And again, the, the, those last ones where we're looking for when we venture into India, we're looking for those for those partners that really want to grow and grow with us because, um, again, we think Noodlebox deserves to be in the hands of, of everybody. Um, and if we find the right partner, um, we'd be really excited to uh, to share that with them. And that's it. Thank you, Venus. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sean. Uh, uh, I love the dumpling part also because India is a massive, massive market. We call them momos. That's the word which we use in India. Uh, like I'm, I'm talking about uh, in general, but it's mm -hmm. a massive market. There are now brands who have built a, like a top line of $200 million also just selling dumplings. We, again, we, we name them as Momo. So I think doing that category and focusing on that menu is massive. It kind yeah. of really uh, uh, gives the whole picture of the menu and the fried chicken, uh, you know, of course, you know, everyone, the whole world is going with crazy with chicken and doing a good product in fried chicken also kind of, you know, connects those uh, dots in terms of bringing in a whole menu, which I guess, I think, Almost no one is doing because yeah. it's hard to pull off. Yeah. Grant. Yes, Venus. Do you want? Do you want to comment on this? I think the, I didn't know about these these two additional elements. I've really 
uh, uh, give me a lot of uh, element in terms of the brand proposition. Uh, so all the restaurants are offering this menu or they you have like maybe a bigger kitchens are doing these menus. How does that happen? Yeah, no, not not under the Noodle Box franchise, our franchise partners can opt in to sell Double Dragon Dumpling or Supreme Leader. They can do both or they can just do one or they, or they don't need to do either of them. They can just stick to Noodle Box. Uh, but what we've found is it definitely adds sales. So it you get the Noodle Box sales and then adding Double jump, Dragon Dumplings adds more sales and Supreme Leader adds more sales. But the the real trick and the thing that we're most proud of is that we've designed the kitchen, the labour, the um, SOPs around the ability to do these three things together, and that is hard to do. It's it's essentially taking three restaurants and collapsing them into one. So there's a lot of work. We've, we've been doing this now for five years. We made some mistakes in the beginning. Um, so it's around, for instance, um, supply chain management. It's around having one chicken, one type of chicken that can go across all menus. Um, you've got to get the packaging. You don't want to have all these different types of packaging. So uh, you've got to have, um, be able to um, store, you know, all of the food. So we did a lot of work in, um, and you've got to be able to market it as well and promote it. So a lot of work has been done over five years to streamline this so that we can, if the franchise partner wants the three brands, we can set, certainly set up the kitchens and, and do it. And I'll just make a... a the Korean crispy chicken is unlike any other chicken in the world. The Koreans and the Japanese, but really the Koreans, pioneered this this crispiness, and we call it the crunch that's heard around the world because you literally, when you bite into the chicken, if you're 10 feet away, you can hear the person eating the chicken. So it's the ability to cook that chicken and keep it crisp for... 20 minutes, 25 minutes. That's what the Koreans managed to do. Usually chicken gets soggy, like KFC after a while, but Korean ch chicken, if it's cooked properly, it, it actually gets crispier over time. That's uh, that's amazing to know, of course, who doesn't love fried chicken? Uh, mm. One of weaknesses of mine. Uh, uh, no, I think this is this is a great session. And uh, I want to tell, also share with everyone that uh, Grant and Sean, will be here with us in India next month, 18th and 19th, during the Delhi Franchise Show. So uh, reach out to us. And if it makes sense, we can also schedule a one-on-one -on -one meeting with Grant, with Sean, when they are here in Delhi. Uh, I think in terms of uh, uh, why this excites me, because see, in India, after the Punjabi food, uh, the biggest category is Chinese, almost 20%. 20% of the overall, uh, this food, f &B service economy, 20% is almost what we call Indian Chinese, Chinese right? And uh, so it's a, it's a massive category. And uh, to be able to translate that into real sort of business dollars, value creation, I think the ideal partner should be who can who can envision to build uh, nothing less than a thousand to two thousand crore company that would be about two hundred million to three hundred million American dollars because that's the that's the that's the opportunity which Grant as the CEO of Concept it is looking to create because other otherwise why even bother to come to India you know India offers them a marketplace which is growing, which is massive, and the cuisine and the system can be scaled. So at a country level, at a country level, we are looking at uh, uh, enterprises, entrepreneurs who want to build at least a minimum value of 300 to 500 American uh, million dollars. If you are looking at a specific city, let's say you're from Bangalore, you're from Hyderabad, you're from Mumbai, 
and you have a demonstrated ability and capacity to uh, 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 to 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 engage with a brand like Noodle Box, uh, then we are open to maybe uh, build a area specific. Uh, partnership uh, but it all depends upon uh, if you will because see this business you cannot win if you uh, don't bring in supply chain efficiencies operation efficiencies and all those things right so uh, so we are open for the this is the first time we are talking about the brand and uh, it is our job at fran global to uh, advise a uh, noodle box and bring in meaningful conversations so you have our details you can reach out to us uh, i also would like my colleagues viraj i know we have limited time to come in and uh, uh, you know give uh, his perspective and if he has any questions for grant and sean if suraj is there the the other thing I might say while we're waiting is we also have a full vegetarian range um, yes. that it makes up about 15% of our sales here in Australia. So it's not a big category, but not many people are doing vegetarian Asian food. It's hard to do, um, but we have the all of the dishes are available in a vegetarian option. Um, in, in India, Grant, that, that, that percentage would grow from 15 to about 30, 35 odd percent. So it will be a massive part of the business. And I'm glad that you, I, I know that you already have. And I guess in India, you can create a couple of more, more sort of palate, Indian palate driven dishes. But yes, uh, vegetarian is always a significant part of the overall turnover. So there is one question on what will be the general pricing of the dishes in the menu. Yes, so uh, I, I'm not sure about for the Indian market. We'll be we'll be led by uh, you know you, and we'll need to do some work. But here in Australia, uh, we have three sizes. There, there would be small, regular, and large. Large definitely uh, feeds two people. And that typically sells for around about um, 20 Australian dollars, but that's for two people. And to put that in perspective, I would just looked up a Big Mac. A Big Mac in Australia is $11. Wow. So uh, everything's relative, um, I, I guess. Uh, a small box is around about $12, um, somewhere around 11 to $12 in Australian dollars. Um, but again, a Big Mac is eleven dollars. So put that in perspective. So I don't know how what price it would be in India yet. Um, we we need to do some work on that. Um, but I would say that we are in the QSR market compared to chicken and KFC and everyone else. We're um, we're slightly above. Um, mcdonald's and burger king and all of that so we would be above them in price um, but it's fresh ingredients cooked to order and you know we're growing double digit growth and people are there's a, a, certainly prepared to pay a, a premium for freshness and and quality right i if, if i may add there uh i think in pricing in india would be dynamic uh there will be lossly couple of loss leaders uh, the way uh, other quick service have, uh, uh, brands have done. So there might be some dishes where it starts from 99, like a couple of lost leaders so that we can get people in. But the average ticket price would be about four to five American. Again, this is just, I'm just saying out of ex experience, the menu would be, it would be a dynamic pricing. And yes, of course, you would have weekends, you would have weekdays. Uh, but our pricing, so Grant, this is my feedback, uh, that uh, the pricing in India would have to be competitive and aggressive, at least uh, when we start, because we just need to get people uh, that, you know, this is, you can order this five times a week or three times a week. Uh, uh, so, so yeah, I think it will be a mix of loss leaders and then average ticket pricing with the way I, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you have it in Australia also. Yes, and, but, and, and we will do some work with our yes. Indian partners, but I think the, the important point is, the base ingredients for noodle box is noodles, which is that's a pretty you know that's a cheap um, yes. ingredient, and rice that's cheap as well. So you start with noodles and rice, and then it's around the cost of the vegetables, which tend to be you know, you know okay. carrot, bok choy, 
um, cabbage, um, peas, um, spring onions. You know, these are these are low low cost ingredients in most countries in the world. And then uh, in terms of protein, um, chicken and and beef. Um, I'm not sure the price in India for that, but uh, they're the other ones. And then prawns. So there's some seafood involved. As well. And we won't do beef in India. I think we would do maybe lamb, which is called mutton. Uh, yeah. That's and and of course chicken is going to be the winner and vegetarian. Uh, yeah. So yes, uh, I think this will be an exciting work to do uh, with the potential partner. Uh, but we, I think the uh, the the brand is quick service, quick service in Chinese and Asian food. We currently don't have it. Uh, and uh, so we're looking for ambitious families, uh, operators, private equity groups uh, who would want to build this category uh, in India, in the organized sector and create value for themselves and, of course, for the brand and for the consumer. Uh, and uh, Siraj has put in his information. Uh, you can reach out to us on our YouTube channels, on, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, uh, and uh, yeah, I think uh, thank you so much, uh, Grant. Any uh, and Sean, any words before we go? Uh, I'd like just to jump in just on the back of that conversation. Um, I, I crossed a concept base um, from a, a chicken brand, um, and, and first I'd like to say like to say that I, I truly love this brand um, because of the innovation and and um, how they go about their business and, and how they treat their franchise partners. But the, the biggest glaring, uh, I've, I've got franchise partners who are with Noodlebox who were also with the chicken brand that I came from. And the, the thing that most excites them about the business is, um, and a lot of these guys are financially driven, is the lower cost of goods. So if you think about a, yes. you think about a, a noodle dish or a rice dish, it's probably got maybe 8 to 10% of chicken and then it's made up of vegetables and rice and noodles compared to... 80 to 100 percent of of in a chicken brand, um, they're getting potentially on some dishes up to 10 points better cogs, um, which then just goes straight in their pocket. Uh, and if they're doing similar sales, so there's 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 great innovations in terms of um, you're not dictated by the price of chicken because it, it only makes up a small percentage of your dish, and then sometimes veg vegetarian dishes that doesn't come into play at all. So. That's also really exciting. Yeah, you know what? Uh, pizza has a very similar thing, and that's why it is such a massive category in India. Twenty six percent growth every year. Four years with doubling our size in the pizza. Mm. Pizza is just there are hundreds of pizza brands in India now. It's just yeah. a product which just because it has very similar elements like the flour and the sauce. It's not very expensive, mm. and you can put yeah. anything on it. It's easy to go, easy to yeah. travel. So, mm -hmm. so I guess it's the same sort of business principles which match your industry as well. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Swaraj, before we go, anything from you? No, I think uh, I think it was a great uh, it was a great uh, show and uh, presentation. And uh, the good thing is I already have two queries where I have to connect with them. Uh, so thanks, Atish, uh, being on the call. I'll be uh, calling you up after this uh, webinar is over to get discuss more in details about the brand. Okay. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Uh, Grant, Sean, I can't wait to see you here in India. Maybe yeah. also make you eat some Indian Chinese food. Uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, of course, bring the brand to India. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll see you again very soon. And uh, thanks a lot for people who are here watching on YouTube now and later. Uh, reach out to us, to Fran Global. If you are looking to... Uh, uh, invest or take your brand internationally through master franchising. We'd love to have a, 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 a chat with you. Good luck for your journey. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for your time. Bye-bye. Really appreciate it. Bye-bye.